beginning turned out so wonderfully sparkly. It definitely took some trial and error to get these right, but I hope I showed you the settings that will work for you too so you can really create your own and just have fun because now your artwork goes from your mind onto an actual sticker sheet like, and people can take that and stick it on wherever they want. <laughs> Hey, I'm Violet. Um, I wanted to make this little video for anybody out there wanting to make stickers with their new Cameo 5 machine. I hope that it saves you time, resources, and headaches um, and answers some of your questions. If not, feel free to comment below with any and I will try my best to answer your questions. Um, also, just a disclaimer, this video doesn't really give you a step-by-step -step of how to make stuff like the, the actual drawings that I'm going to leave to you guys, like how to use uh, Procreate or whatever drawing tools and apps that you prefer. This is more specifically how to use this lovely little machine over here and Silhouette Studio. So with that, let's get into the video. And ta-da, it's done. I'm happy with it. Okay, so now that you've drawn your artwork in Procreate and you've gotten that all exported, I like to import it into Canva. And this isn't like a full-blown tutorial, but I like to put it into Canva because I find it much easier to lay out text and put in my logo and stuff in Canva as opposed to doing this in Procreate. Uh, and this is just eight and a half by 11 because I find that sizing very easy to plug into Silhouette Studio and get two sticker sheets per eight and a half by 11 sticker uh, paper. So I went ahead and I added my logo and the name of the sticker sheet collection and I like to put a little SKU number up on top so for future organization. And so now, um, I just double check that I like how everything is lined up, like the spacing, and then I simply export it. And um, I like to download it as a PNG. All right, now that you've saved your PNG from, oh, from over in Canva, go ahead and open up Silhouette Studio. And you wanna go over here to open the page setup panel, and you're going to wanna have the orientation rotated to horizontal, and then over here on registration page setup, like registration marks, you always wanna turn that on. It will help you know where to place your sticker sheets so that when the machine goes to cut and register, it won't overlap and it won't um, not be cut incorrectly. Place your image. I just simply click and drag it in. It's easy because I like to try to get two sheets per page. I try to line it up and then you can do copy paste. And obviously these are a little smaller than what I'd want. Hold the shift key down and expand it to about that size. That way, this is about as big as you can make them without them running into the registration marks and possibly not cutting correctly. I'm not going to show you how to set up your printer. I'm gonna leave that to you because that's a bit of a hassle and I would make this video very long. And so now that you have your um, document set up here, you're gonna to wanna to print it. So you can do control P to print or you can go up to file and print. So you just go to the normal printer dialog box, go under preferences, paper quality, and I like to use photo paper mat, and I hit okay. Make sure that your printer is set to the same thing, paper quality the same, so that you get the best print. And go ahead and hit print. All right, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I'm really happy with the colors. And so now that that's ready, I'm gonna just set this aside here because we're gonna have to laminate it. But before, um, well, I mean, it's really your choice how you want to do it if you want to laminate first. But what I feel like doing right now is going back and setting up the Silhouette Studio file so that it's ready to cut. So we will come back and laminate this after I've set up the file and prepared it to cut. So go over to Trace. It kind of looks like a, a butterfly, like the Trace panel. And you're going to select Trace Area. And you're going to select your two sticker sheets. And I like to do Outline. 
and I bumped the threshold all the way up to 100, but this is something I wanted to show you. You really don't, you're gonna have to mess with the threshold to get it to do the exact cutout shapes you want because right now you can see it's pretty messy and you don't want it a jagged, odd cut. So what to do to fix that is over the threshold, you go over and you just keep bringing it down until it's nice and smooth. As you can see, all the jagged edges disappeared. You do want to go around just to make sure that um, there's no more jagged on any of your other images. Make sure it's nice and clean as you would like it. Okay, and so now that that's set, you can scroll down to here and you're going to say trace outer edge. And then once you've done that, you can zoom in and you can see that red line is showing here. And that's what you want. You're going to want to go over to send. And you're going to just, this is just me kind of double checking everything making sure everything is lined up, nothing is off or cutting funny or jagged. And so far that's looking good. And now here's the big thing you want to really pay close attention to because you don't want these to be die cuts. You want them to be kiss cuts. You want them to peel off and not cut through um, the entire sticker sheet like a die cut sticker. And so you gotta pay attention to the blade depth and the fourths and the passes. So in order to get that correct, for uh, I found once my sticker sheet has been laminated, I have found to keep it um, at a blade depth of two. So I wanted a blade depth of two and I want a force of 27 and I want a pass of only one. I only, I only want one pass and speed can stay at four. Now it's gonna tell me no media is loaded, all right? But again, it's because I wanted to get this set up before I laminated everything. So now that we've got this set and ready to go, we're going to put a little pause and we're gonna go laminate um, our sticker sheets. All right, you ready to do that? Let's do that. Um, laminating for me has never been the fun part of the sticker design process, um, but it is necessary. So. One of uh, my pet peeves with the silhouette, and I'm pretty sure the Cricut is, does the same thing, but the way it's designed, um, if you remember when you're setting up this in Silhouette Studio, that you can't make anything up here. Like you don't want to put anything up here that you want cut out, right? And the other drawback is when you buy these laminate sheets, which are fantastic, and if it, life was easy, you just simply you know, they're pretty much the same size. You just stick them right over there, right? But no, the challenge here comes in by not covering the registration area with the laminate sheet. And so you have to really pay attention to the little grid on the back. And I usually hold it up to the window to have a backlight showing me which lines to cut. So it's like here and here, and then um, you, you lose like this, this whole, L shape of laminate. And as you can see, I've been, I've been saving it. I don't know what I'm gonna do with all this extra laminate, um, but I just don't wanna throw it away. What I went ahead and did, because I knew I was going to be printing uh, a couple, multiple sheets this size, even in the future, even if I change the design. So I went forward and I made myself a little template. Once I cut out the laminate the size that I wanted, I just you know, uh, measured and made a little template. So going forward, I can set these guys aside and then pick my laminate that I want. Then I can pull out my guillotine style paper cutter, like the classic cutter, and um, just make sure I line this up all correctly. Here is the tricky part. If you're not really careful, you will get little air bubbles like that, and then that's like basically you gotta throw the whole sticker sheet away or offer it for like 50% off for people who don't mind the errors, right? So with that warning in mind, also you wanna um, make sure this is really clean, free of dust, or if you have pets like cats or dogs, then you'll be a little more ready to go. One of the tricks I found is if you pre-peel and fold it back just a hair, just a little bit, like, um, what would that be, like a quarter inch, half inch? Then you just fold it back like that. So remember, don't cover that L shape. And line this up, good and even. But there you go, now it's all sparkly and ready to be cut out. And so now, what we do is um, you take your cutting mat, forgive me, it's a little messy because I've used it so many times, um, and you're going to want to pay attention to the little arrow up here and when the, where the numbers meet. So you'll see the numbers meet here, the one and the one, and that 
that is the side that you feed into the machine. And so remember this little black square always goes into that corner. So um, make it flush with the ruling lines, the ruler lines here, because that's really important too, because that would, if, if it's not perfectly flush in those lines, like um, of the right angle, it will cut funny and the cut lines will be off. I use just the slightest amount of this masking tape to hold it in place. Cover just the slightest amount so that it doesn't disrupt the registration. And you're like, oh my gosh, this is so tedious. Yes, it is tedious. But the more you do it, the faster you'll get through it and it won't seem so tedious once you have your routine in place. All right, so now line up your cutting mat, this corner. And if you see on your machine, there's a very small little pink arrow pointing to this end marking line. And you wanna make sure that the edge of the cutting mat is right flush with that. And you're going to hit these little rollers. They're, they're like little roller feeders. And you're going to feel both edges of the mat bump those. And that's how you know it's fully in and aligned. And then you're going to press this button to feed it in. And then it should take it in nice and straight. And then now that we've got that all lined up, let's go back to Silhouette Studio and send this thing to cut. All right, we're back in Silhouette Studio. And now you can see down here, it's saying ready. So it's all ready to be sent to cut. And so this is where we say a little prayer that everything goes well. So go ahead and hit send. And now I hit send. It's gonna be doing a registration, which as you can see, it's looking and making sure nothing is in the way of that little L-shaped registration area. And as long as it's happy, nothing is in its way or overlapping, it should make that happy sound. That is a great sound. It means it's going to do its job and start printing, I mean cutting. So now we're just going to wait. All right, now that it's finished printing, we're going to um, check we're gonna check how it cut and make sure that the registration was on point. We're gonna press a little down arrow to eject it. You can see it, it cut out the sticker and it made it a kiss cut because see behind, behind here, the backing is still there. So it's a kiss cut, it's not a die cut. So we got those settings right. And so now what I'm going to do, I'm actually gonna feed this back into the machine because I want it to cut out um, actually do a die cut cut and cut out the sticker sheet itself so I can have like the full sticker sheet cut out and I don't have to manually cut them out like with my guillotine cutter. All right so I'm going to show you how to do that in Silhouette Studio. All right so now what we're going to go back to doing here is we're going to go back to the design. This is how you're going to set up um, to cut out the actual uh, sticker sheet itself. Go ahead and select your drawing tools and design. I like the rounded edges, and so I'm going to select and draw a little rectangle like this, making sure it fits the sizes that I want. Copy paste this, realign it. And then just and so there we go. Okay, and so now that you've got that laid out the way you want it. You're going to go over to send and then we're going to lower i'm sorry up the force to blade depth to um four and the force back up to 33 and i am going to do two passes just to make sure that it really goes through and then i'm going to hit send now that i've got my cutting board and stickers all lined up again um then this will cut this out for me I do want to add that I did go back just to be double sure, even though I turned off the cutting of this layer, this. I wanted to let you know that I went back and removed this and just set this off over here. And then when I was under send, then I was guaranteed that I was only going to be cutting these edges, double check my blade depth and force and passes, and then I went and I hit send. So now it just goes forward and cuts that out nice for me so that I don't have to manually cut it out. Big reveal, we're going to take the tape off the edges now. And then as you can see, oh yes, see, perfect. It went ahead and cut that out for me. And so now, 
So I just wanted to get on and show you how happy I am with the turnout. Like they turned out so wonderfully sparkly. Like I'm really happy with the turnout, the color, the size. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it definitely took some trial and error to get these right, but I hope I showed you the settings that will work for you too so you can really create your own um, for yourself. And just have fun because now your artwork goes from your mind onto an actual sticker sheet, like, and people can take that and stick it on whatever they want. <laughs> so thank you for joining me on this. I hope it helps you and have fun, happy creating. Oh, and these are available. These are available in my Etsy shop if anybody actually wants, wants their own little sticker sheet. Okay. You're free to go now. Thank you for watching. <laughs> he just woke up from a nap. His tongue is sticking out. Did you have a good nap? Look at your bed head. Look at that hair sticking up. Oh, Junior cracked me up. You look like a little bit of a mess today. <laughs> oh, I love you.